Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at our brand new Dell Inspiron 15 3593 laptop, and we are going to be upgrading the various components within this laptop. And this is a new machine, so it hasn't been opened up before, and we're just going to start off by going around and releasing all the screws in the base of it. Unlike a lot of these machines, uh, this particular model has a DVD drive, so we are going to start off by removing that. So this screw here, and possibly this one here as well, attach the DVD drive, and then with those removed we can just slot the drive out, and then underneath it there are two additional screws. Uh, obviously if you have a version of the machine without the DVD drive this these screws will not be here there may be an additional chassis screw however it's fairly self-explanatory to go around the base and remove all the screws that you can see and what I'm doing is at the top here as I take them out I'm just putting them laying them out because there are some different length screws used. So we can see those ones in the top corner and for the DVD drive are slightly longer than the ones used here. This one, these two corner ones appear to be captive as I can't lift those out. Uh, so this machine is one of the few laptops currently available in the UK featuring the Intel Ice Lake chips, so the true 10th generation core i3 and i5 and i7 processors. Uh, this particular machine is one of the i3 chips, so it is a dual core. Um, there's an interesting division at the moment where you have the old 14 nanometer 10th generation chips which are up to six cores and then a smaller core count the 10 nanometer ones I guess to kind of help yields and so on at the moment. So if we can get this screw out or we'll just do it when we tip it. Okay maybe a captive one there as well and those two back corner ones definitely are. So with those screws removed we want to now flip the laptop over and we have a nice new pry tool and the service manual says to start at the back corner which seems a little weird to me but we are going to do as it instructs and it does not really want to move anywhere so I'm going to start at the front as I uh, normally would. So what we're going to do is just gently press this in straight down to push out the base panel and in doing so just separate out so as we work our way around there you can see we're just releasing the clips You don't want to apply too much force, you just want to sort of press down so that you can hear those separate out. And with as much of that done as possible, we will now close the laptop back over, turn it back over, and then gently just lift that base panel up towards the back of the machine and off. Now that we're inside the machine, obviously the first thing we should do before proceeding any further is we are going to find the connector here for the battery. And we are just going to, so a little hard to see here, but we want to push this on each side just to pull this connector out of the battery socket. Versions of this machine which are fitted with a solid state drive, the drive will be here. 
Now handily, despite the fact that this is a hard drive equipped machine, Dells still include the screw and mounting point and the, uh, the M2 socket for an SSD. So what we are going to do is we have a 128 gigabyte SSD here. Uh, these machines do support both uh, M SATA, uh, sorry, uh, M2 S uh, SATA SSDs and PCIe. Uh, the BIOS reports that it can take either. Um, so we are just going to fit our SSD in here. I normally recommend uh, I'm careful there as well because the speaker is magnetic so it makes it a little bit hard to get the screw into place accurately. Everything's a bit tight around there. So we're just going to, the screw was already in place even though there was no M2 drive. So we just remove that, slot in our SSD and screw it down. We can also remove and replace the hard drive if we choose to. So by removing the four mounting screws for the hard drive. Now obviously um, I'm not a huge fan of the amount of stuff that Dell install on their machine out of the box so I will actually be clean installing to the SSD with Windows um, from a USB stick. I do have some videos covering how to do that uh, but alternatively I could use True Image or cloning, similar cloning software to um, transfer the Windows image to the SSD. So having lifted that hard drive there, what we need to do is just uh, remove those screws. We just want to slide the SATA connector, if it will come off. surprisingly tricky one to remove as there's not actually a great deal to hold on to there but we have our hard drive removed now what you'll see is this is a slightly thinner hard drive is it yes so I have a this looks to be a so here we have a standard nine and a half mil hard drive and we can see that is a little bit thicker suggesting this is actually uh, sort of seven mil thick hard drive instead. Uh, so if you're fitting a replacement hard drive into here, you will want to be aware of that and make sure you get a thinner drive. As it is, I actually want to keep this hard drive in here, but for the purpose of removing it, it is four screws on this caddy. So unscrew, 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 unscrew. The drive will then just slide up and out this caddy fit your replacement into it, screw it back in, make sure you have it the same way around as the one you removed, then you may find for this SATA connector it's actually easiest if you completely remove the battery as there's the cable going under it so you can get a bit more angle on things, but we are just going to slide that onto there and refit our four screws. Now because this model actually has um, a optical drive as well, we do have the option we could even um, put a caddy in there and could then fit uh, an additional hard drive or SSD to give us three drive bays between the two and a half inch SATA, the M SATA or PCI Express M2 and the optical bay uh, with caddy. So actually the potential if you need it to have quite a lot of storage in one of these machines. And with that last screw in place that is the drives looked at. So all that's left to do now is to reassemble the machine. So we want to take our battery connector and because we have finished making changes, plug it back in. So slot that back in. Sorry, I realized I was blocking the lens as I did that. 
and then we want to take the base panel and put that into place flip things back over and then press the two panels together so that we can hear everything just clicking back into place and in doing so this should all be you know fit should be and finish especially using a plastic pry tool do not use metal tools because they will mark up the plastic quite badly but having done that we can now close things back over um, obviously with this kind of work you are technically voiding your warranty and um, particularly if you're fitting upgraded parts or non-genuine parts however going through and doing this there are really no warranty stickers or seals that are broken in this process um, so as long as you take care and you use plastic tools which aren't going to mark the chassis in obvious ways and you know basic precautions to avoid damage you will probably get away with it in that regard um, obviously if Dell say you know work out that the machine has been tampered with and refused that is you know on at your own risk however you know for basic work like this and returning it to standard afterwards we can get in and out of this without breaking any seals and without any obvious signs of entry on this sort of design um, I hope you found this video useful and um, do be sure to let me know any questions or comments you have uh, I will be doing some performance testing of this laptop as well and um, yeah let me know any questions hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this video because it does help us a huge amount in doing so and yeah really just thanks for watching and I hope we've been of some help